Welcome to the Exponential Marketing Club, where we talk about everything content marketing, from just getting started with your business, to growing a captivating presence with your website and social media, and on to scaling with Facebook and Instagram advertising for exponential exposure and long-term success. Hi, my name is Sally Hendrick, your host and Exponential Marketing Strategist. Let's get started, y'all. All right. Hi, guys. My name is Sally Hendrick, and I'm here with Colin Yearwood, my friend who left Nashville, left me here, left me behind, and moved to the Tampa area recently. And uh, Colin is here to share the five pillars of success for startups. Uh, but before we get into that, uh, Colin, tell me a little bit about your background and what's going on with you and how you you know how you're moving into this business coaching thing that you've been doing for a while Sally, it's good to always talk to you and i didn't leave you behind i gave you another place to visit oh um, gotcha where you, where you have friends um so for me i've been uh, in the online business space for i think over 14 years and in the last five years we really settled in on business coaching because that's my background in corporate. I've always been in middle management, doing roles in uh, process development, uh, teaching, coaching, training, and it's just a natural extension. And I went full time in my business in 2017 because of a layoff. And right now I focus on helping mainly new entrepreneurs. People are transitioning from, um, are looking to transition from being an employee to an entrepreneur, helping them get their process started. Um, online and I coach through a few platforms, actually two large um, online business platforms. So I coach uh, um, as part of their team or yeah, as part of their team. They send, they send their clients to me to help them through that process. And mainly it's just developing a process where you could actually um, have a balance between life and business versus just being overwhelmed with business like I was for many years until I figured this out. Yeah, and I, I really like a lot of the things that you've talked about over the years. We met a few years ago. Of all places, we met on Twitter. We talked about this in the last um, the last episode with Pip Seymour uh, last week when you showed up as a guest. And what was funny about that is that I saw Colin everywhere. It's like I saw him on Twitter. I was messing around over there trying to figure it out. And then I saw him on these meetup things around Nashville. And he was just, his face was always popping up. And I was like, I'm going to reach out and say hello to this guy and, and see what happens. And next thing you know, he comes to this treasure hunt that I held downtown um, in Nashville. And we've just, we hit it off and have been great friends ever since. And it's been really a pleasure to work with you too over the years because after that treasure hunt you came into my marketing program and then we oh but but even before that you said hey you ought to speak at craft content so I went and spoke at craft content in Nashville and then I became a featured speaker the next year and I believe Beth maybe you and I actually met at for the first time either right before craft content or right at craft content and then we started hanging out after that with John so uh, it's just kind of funny how all things how this all comes together so Colin is really into this whole taking you from being an employee into being an entrepreneur and there's a lot of things that people don't realize when they step out and they they finally jump and you know make that jump and and get out of the corporate or regular job life what happens is is that they don't really understand what are all the pillars of success that I need to at least have something built up so that I have a safe place to land because it can be really tough to make that transition and then if you're missing a couple of pieces it's like whoa you really feel it <laughs> when you're out there flailing around right absolutely and um, a lot of it is my personal experience um, uh, I took the jump two times prior to my last um, time going full time, and I realized I was missing some of the some of the things we're going to talk about. Um, that's why I, I went back to working, and I've been I've been fortunate to have been very blessed. I've always had work or jobs that I enjoyed, 
and allowed me to grow, but I always had this thing within me that I wanted to do my own thing and reach people in my own way versus through um, work, but um, through my job. But uh, you're right, you definitely, there's a process to that. I think many people overlook the process, but eventually we learn the process over, you know, through trial and error. So it's my hope to at least put some of these things on the radar. So it's not that much of trial and error, but just implementation. Well, there's nothing like having the pressure on you in the moment when you need to get some things shored up and figured out. So I appreciate that very much because I I did the same thing. I left my corporate job in 2016 and I stepped into something. I had had this successful launch and I had made enough money to get me through several months, right? But I didn't understand it's almost like I got through that part of it, but then after that, I was flailing. It was a whole new world, and then I was like, how do I start over and pull in more sales and get more people in? It's not just happening naturally. It's something that I've got to work at every day, and I've got to have a process that's sustainable, not something that yeah. is just you know so hard that you... Uh, that you can't keep it up and going in this um, consistent manner. So why don't you go into what the five pillars are real quick, and then we'll talk to everybody in the room for a second if you've got time, uh, the guests that are here, and and we'll try to implement you know some learning into this. Awesome. One of the things that I would point out is I think um, when you look at whatever company you work with or what kind of rules you've had. I think there's a lot of lot of things that they're doing well that we can take and implement in our businesses versus trying to reinvent the wheel. I think that's a natural instinct, at least it was a natural instinct for me, trying to reinvent the wheel until I realized, okay, what is work that work that I can take now and make money? Um, and one of the, the, one of the themes that I was thinking about, the overarching theme is having proper expectations, right? Um, and having proper expectations as to when it comes to, and one of the pillars is skill set. Um, and the other is mindset, finances, practices, time management. And a bonus that I put in there is relationships, because it's through relationships I've really grown um, in my online business. And as you mentioned, how we met, um, we met on the internet, we met in real life, and we built a, a cool friendship over the years. It was about 2016, I think, 2016 we met. Um, yeah, so those are the five. Those are the five key parts of uh, the five pillars that I I see that um, is important to making that jump, making that leap. Let's repeat those again. We've got skill set, mindset, Mind, mindset, finances, finances, processes, processes, time management, time management, and then you tacked on the relationships relationships yeah. yeah and that's that's huge because if you don't have those relationships it's really difficult to um, <clears throat> expand into other groups we can't always just throw social media posts out there and and constantly email people to be the only way that we reach people we've got to be able to tap into other networks of people and whenever we do things like this for example like Coriani I would never meet Coriani necessarily unless Colin you had invited her and then Beth I tapped on your face as soon as I pushed that button and there you were and maybe Alex and Coriani would never meet you if you hadn't come in so why don't we go around the room real quick and just give me like just a quick hello and what you're doing and where you feel like you are when it comes to these five pillars that we have to establish anybody who wants to go first you can unmute yourself i'll jump in or there's ben I know you <laughs> either one <laughs> why don't you go first you were first uh, go ahead and i'll go next after you Okay, cool. Hi, everyone. I'm Coriani Baptist. I help black Christian moms uh, keep their life together, keep focused and calm, and I have various calming techniques and trainings on keeping the flow of life. So for me, I have been an entrepreneur for about four years, and I'm 
just in the last year, understanding um, it's not just network marketing, it's other things, right? And so I met Colin through a social media platform and um, and company, and I've been coached by him. So thank you so much, Colin, for, for the time here. Um, for me, I'm, I'm still um, wanting to uh, having that have more of, of the flow and so I'm learning um, to just be in the moment I know that seems cliche but seriously like like I was saying earlier like it's breakfast time right now and it's okay that I'm on clubhouse because the kids will be fine for five minutes you know so um, so that's me and uh, uh, thanks so much for the time excellent thank you very much Coriani where is it that you live what part of the country yeah I'm in Portland Oregon Ah, hence it is breakfast time. Yeah, we're about, we're, <laughs> we're about to enter lunch here. Oh, so, okay. Beth, you want to step up? I want to hear what's, what's going on with you since you've moved to Texas. Well, hi, everyone. I'm Beth English. I am an artist and speaker, and I train leaders to improve their creative performance. So I work with teams in real life and virtually to help them be more creative at work using emotional wellness practices. So I have been doing this for quite some time and I would have to say of all the pillars that you mentioned, Colin, right now I am really getting my processes more streamlined and that's helping me with my time management and of course i'm always focused on building relationships the best that i possibly can and just keep getting better and better at that so that's where i'm at sally i love it um one of the things i want to mention just to the group beth is one is someone who i don't know how you feel about it but you exude this enthusiasm that really helps other people tap into a different mindset. So I want to say that just coming into this, it's almost like the mindset and the skill set portion of this are wrapped into one for you because that just comes out of you naturally. Well, thank you. I'm glad it looks natural from the <laughs> outside. <laughs> well, when we have all these other distractions of the things that we need to put together, it may feel internally like we're not putting that out there, but that is the the thing that you present and it and it does show. So I appreciate it. And I did attend one of your talks one time over on um, just a few streets away and it was, you know, it was just really refreshing. I felt very, um, I felt very included in the conversation, even though we were in a room full of people. And then when we rode that bus together, that you had, um, Beth had done this big art piece that actually became um, wrap, a wraparound on one of the city buses. And it was just really fun and really joyful. And I think even your piece was named Joy. And um, it was just a really nice addition. It was a full-on immersive experience, wasn't it? Yes, very much so. <laughs> it was a gallery show wrapped in with a talk, wrapped in with a bus ride, experiencing the art on the walls and then in your everyday life. So I am all about creativity and the creative process and how it can improve all areas of your life. And so that's sort of what I teach. And it is so much fun because there is nothing better than creating the life that you want every single day working on it. Like you're a sculptor or you're a potter or you're a painter, but you're using all of these skills to mold the kind of life you want to live. Exactly. I love it. I love it. And I really want everybody to hear that here uh, because if you do put you know, put your heart into things and you do these things that really bring you happiness and joy, it makes the pieces that you don't necessarily like so much better <laughs> and you will be incentivized to actually get some of those things done, like maybe the finances or the processes or the time management. And, um, and I think that that's very inspiring. So thank you. 
Now, Alex. Well, I mean, I've, I've so met go ahead. That, um, at a, I, I'm, I'm kind of having a flashback. I think I've met that at an event in Nashville, if I recall correctly. Did you have like a large artist community for women or something like that? Well, I do have a large artist community. There's about uh, 9,000 members right now. And it's basically just a really fun place for people who identify as creatives in Nashville to connect online. And um, it's a great way to feel encouraged and supported in any type of work that you're doing that requires creativity. But I'm sure we probably met at an event if your brain is telling you that we did. I love going out to events and networking with people. It is so much fun. And um, I've been to so many over the last decade. It's hard to remember every everyone I meet, but I'm glad that we're here today connecting. Yeah, we definitely did meet because all of these things just started added up in my brain. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Is that still called the Nashville Creative Group on the that Facebook group, Beth? Yes. Okay, cool. That is it. Yeah, that, that rings a bell. I'm not in that group, but that rings a bell. Yeah. It and is. you probably, I know you know a lot of people in there, Colin, so. Alex, do you want to say something and give us a little bit of uh, insight as to the pieces of the, the pillars that you've tapped into, the ones you may be looking to expand? Yes, certainly. Um, I'm actually in the invention space <laughs> and uh, I have online courses on the process of product development and product licensing. And I've been in the invention space for about six years and I decided uh, it's kind of an odd space. So there wasn't a lot of information and help available to people online. So I said, well, you know, let me put up some courses and that way, you know, at least they'll know what's kind of going on. And so that's how the whole process started. And um, and I, I think I need to work on all five, Colin, all five of them. And, you know, it, it, it's one thing that's so interesting because you were talking about, you know, taking your skill sets from, you know, your work background. Well, I was a general manager for 12 years and I ran an amazing company with 64 employees and 30 vehicles and and I did a great job and now I'm sitting at home <laughs> with three courses online and I, I'm like this is so hard <laughs> it's like give me back 64 employees I know what I'm doing so I, I think Colin I'm trying to figure out how to take that experience and and da either downsize it and drill it down more or I don't know I'm just working through it that's what I'm doing well surely you were using some of the skills that you had in management to be able to even put together the processes uh, of this course or these courses that you have online <laughs> Um, <laughs> so yeah, you're combining that and the invention space. I mean, that's something that's really exciting. There's a lot of people that have, uh, that have ideas and they need what you have because you've gone through this process before. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of people are very confused about that process. And unfortunately, there's a lot of companies in the space that aren't necessarily uh, up to snuff as you know what I mean like they're selling services and they're gonna get that money from you uh, so my goal is to make sure everybody understands the process so they know what they can do and what they shouldn't be doing exactly, exactly. well and that's what we're here for we're here to help pave the way for other people so they don't have to go through all of the hard lessons. I mean, everybody's going to have to go through some sort of hard lessons within their business. I mean, there's always going to be that piece that we're missing. And that's why we end up, you know, a lot of people when they start up, they say, well, you know, you, a lot of businesses don't succeed. And it's because they don't reach out to get the information that they need and they try to just do it themselves in the beginning but when you own a business all of a sudden you're wearing many many hats that you never had to wear before and the the idea of oh I just want to do this one thing it's like well do you want to be contracted by another person who brings you that work or do you want to be the business owner 
who literally has to step into that leadership role because you've got to take on all of those things and then divide them back up out to other people. It's like, it's fu it's weird. It's weird how you have to kind of like climb this mountain and stand on the top of it and you have to be able to see all the valleys around you below and then know how to put in your stakes on each side to hold up what's going on underneath you. Colin, yeah, good way to it. yeah. So, Colin, do you want to add anything else to any of the pieces, or does anybody have a question uh, for either of us uh, about any of this? So, what I can just add a little bit, to the, uh, I'll just put a little flesh on the, that, the bones of the pieces, right? Like the framework. Um, one of the things with mindset, I think that one of the most overlooked things when we get into entrepreneurship, we assume that oh, I'll be good, right? But not understanding that inner conversation that shows up um, and all the programming that we've gone through, right? I mean, the work, workplace, uh, we don't, in many cases, even if we're a leader in the workplace, we're not a leader by ourselves. We have someone helping guide us also. Um, but when we're in entrepreneurship, self-employment, you are leading and many times if you're not in the right um, communities or have the right people around you, you're not getting any leadership. So you kind of feel alone. And that can cause a lot of uh, challenges uh, mentally with the mindset because you start second guessing yourself, questioning the decisions you're making and questioning at times if this is the right thing for me versus when we're in the workplace, we usually have that support there to kind of prop you up when you need, when you need that, need to prop it up. I agree there. Uh, there, there ta there's a certain amount of courage that you have to have to be able to make decisions. And that's a big deal when you own a business because it's your decision and you're the one who has full consequence to that decision. You have to fix things if it's not the right decision. But the fear of even making the decision will stop people completely in their tracks and I think people just need to kind of, you know, go for it, at least to a certain extent. Don't go spend all your money or all your resources in one thing until you kind of, you know, take little bites along the way. But you've got to be able to make a decision going in some sort of direction um, and then make sure it's the right one before you pull back and try another path. Yeah. And also that, that comes with having proper expectations. I think in the online space, um, for many years, and even, you know, now you see people, uh, we make it out to be easier than it really is. And it's kind of skews the expectations of people getting into the space. They expect to have a result faster than it's, in many cases, it's not possible. So because of not having the right expectations from a mindset point of view, then you make some decisions early on that doesn't pay off. It doesn't align with your expectations. And then you're gun shy as you continue to to grow, or, or I mean, you now you're like questioning yourself because the decisions you made didn't match your expectations. So I'm really curious about you guys that are here. If you have reached that point where you thought, "Oh my gosh, I just can't do this again. I, I've I've gotten this far. I didn't have the success that I expected in this direction." And now what do I do? I'm tired. I, I don't want to go through the maze again. I don't want to look for a new path. And it takes a while and you can get knocked back in that. So has anybody experienced that and want to share? I would be happy to share my experiences of falling on my face over and over and over again. Um, I think that it's part of the process, right? Like developing that resilience is part of the entrepreneur experience. And so you just have to make peace with it. And I know that just because something you try didn't work doesn't mean that your value is less than. It's just called iteration. And you just take what you've learned and you keep moving forward and you keep moving forward. And it it's challenging because not only is it helping define your business but it's defining yourself as a person and that personal growth process is not easy you know because we tie our self-worth so much to our professional performance that 
when you intermix the two, then you're looking for trouble. And it, it doesn't help in the, the process of creating something that's going to be more successful in the future if you continue to, like Colin said, not have a mindset that is focused on realistic expectations of your own growth and of your business growth. Love that. And it's so true. We all fall on our faces over and over again. And it is that mindset work that that allows us to get up and try something else. But sometimes, sometimes we really will hit a brick wall and we may even go back to work or we may go do something completely different and say, I'm not going to do this again. But there's always that nagging in the back of our minds and in our hearts that says, but I've got to do this. I know this is something that is going to help people. And I think that that's what the true entrepreneurial spirit is all about because we have to tap back into that again and again and again. And I can completely relate to that because I tried to go out as an entrepreneur a few times before it finally stuck five years ago. And I you know, went back and took a job. And I think it's just about knowing that there's always a season for things to come to fruition. And you plant that seed of entrepreneurship and it doesn't completely go away, even if you're maybe in another job or you're doing something that's not directly related to the path you wanna be on. I think, well, what is this season trying to teach me that I need to know that's gonna help me be more successful in the future? Like when I went to go work for a corporation in between two seasons of entrepreneurship, I did it because I needed the money honestly and I spent a year there until I was laid off which was a huge blessing but what I learned in the process has completely impacted the way that I operate now so I think even though we may feel down about the fact that we have to get a job somewhere else or it's not exactly working out the way that we want it to we have to remember that we're in a season that's trying to teach us something that is for our growth so we can celebrate in knowing that instead of with the wrong type of mindset or a mindset that's gonna make you feel less than think that you're only there because you're not doing something you should have been doing in the first place so it's kind of tricky you know our mind is very powerful and so that's when you know when Colin said that our mindset is such a huge piece of the entrepreneurship experience um, he was not kidding it is so intertwined in every every day of our lives <laughs> that I can definitely relate to what you said about going back into the workforce right and that's our expectations we leave and then we put a lot of uh, pressure on I have to make this work because everyone is looking at us right and then that's even more pressure I went to make similar to that when I moved to Nashville in 2014 I was building my business for about a year and then I had to go back to work um, and it kind of dinged me a little bit but at that point I was focused on what kind of work can I find that will allow me to continue to grow and learn so I can, you know, go do this again, come back out and create the kind of business I wanted. So I, I ended up being a corporate trainer, which allowed me to get a chance to teach, train, speak, uh, all of the training and education I did in that role is what I'm using right now. Um, uh, when I went out again in 2017, because I got laid off from that job two years in. So going back, it doesn't have to be a bad thing if you're very intentional. Um, like you mentioned, just going back and see, okay, what can I learn here? Uh, not only from the experience, what can I learn from this job? How can I show up here that will equip me to go back into my passion, go back into entrepreneurship a lot stronger and better equipped? So uh, I think that's one of the things, um, even when you're in a job, you don't have to be laid off or go out the first time. A lot of people don't look at it that way. What can I learn here that I can use in my business in the future? I want to say hello to Kimberly. Thanks for coming up. Um, Kimberly, if you want to say something. And I think what we're going to do is try to wrap up in the next 10 minutes. And so I'd like to move into maybe what, which part of this do you want to deep, 
dive into a little bit more, Colin. We've got time management, finances, some of the things that people like to avoid. Um, <laughs> what do you think about mentioning I, that? I would say finances. You know, time management is one that I think a lot of people cover. You know, we really kind of know, but I think there's a part that is like the hidden secret people don't want to talk about is finances. Um, <laughs> what does it really look like? How much, you know, how much money do I need to make um, in order to make this thing work? Um, knowing those numbers and also with finances, a lot of it has, has to do with mindset too. Right? Um, if, we, if you're if you're used to working a traditional job and getting a salary every two weeks or once a month, um, it's very different than having that unpredictable income as an, as an entrepreneur, especially when you started out. And to be totally transparent, that's the reason I actually I went back to work is at the time I was married and my partner she didn't used to that uncertainty in income, right? So like, okay, let's let's bring some peace to this situation and go back there and start working on creating a business that generates uh, consistent income. But finances to me is one of the biggest things a lot of people don't look into. And one thing to always tell people who act with it, I don't recommend starting a business to solve your financial issues because it doesn't solve it initially. Exactly. There, yeah, that's the thing a lot of people are like, people will message me sometimes from my childhood and they'll be like, hey, you're running a business. What can I do? To, I've got to make $500 by the end of the month for something. And I'm just like, oh my gosh. I'm like, this is not, you're not, you're not looking in the right direction. You need to figure out another way. You need to find a way to shore up your expenses. You need to, you know, tap into other resources, but trying to like start a business real quick. And I think that that's why a lot of people will, and we talked about, you know, Coriani was talking about network marketing before and mentioned that. I think a lot of people get into that to, to solve a more immediate issue when it comes to money to be able to maybe pay for those lessons for their kid or to buy the things that they would need for something and they think oh I'm just gonna save money on these products that some other company is selling and I'm gonna sell through them and I'm gonna make a little bit of money but then when they get into it they find out that over time it's like well are you selling the product or are you selling the opportunity and then that's a whole different sale and a whole different mindset and is that really where you meant to go with this and if you're going to do that then you've got to brand yourself and you've got to figure out all these other things and it just gets bigger and bigger and I think that that um, can get people into a lot of trouble because their initial initial reason for even stepping into it was to make a little extra cash and that is really not the heart the heartbeat of the company if you are truly wanting to create some sort of change in the world to help people to avoid some sort of problem or situation and that that just really i mean it could really mess with people and that's i think that's also why a lot of people only get so far because their focus is on the money part of it when they need to figure out a way to create some sort of investment pool to be able to step into that i have a lot of people that come to me saying oh, i need to run ads because i've got to get this going and i've got to make five thousand dollars by the end of the month and my rent is due and i'm just like I, I, yeah, I get that, but this is not about me trying to find you a way to make money. This is about me trying to help you create a system to be able to amplify something that's already working or to use some money to invest to test the idea. And that's the part that people 
don't understand. It just takes longer than what they may expect. And I'm talking about in my world, I do, I help people with content marketing and with Facebook ads and stuff like that. And so they have to have gone through a certain number of these steps with the processes before they can really step into what I offer. Yeah, you know, when I, when I coach um, clients around that, you know, creating a business that eventually they get a lot of to leave their job, um, I talk a lot about personal finances. You know, where your per- knowing where your personal finances is and understanding that process. And it's not the sexy thing people want to hear. You know, I know in marketing we talk about give them what they want and then when they come in, you give them what they need. I go the opposite way. Here's what you need. And to me, it's a, it's a great filter that helps me work with better people, but also it's bad at times because you really don't want to address that, right? Uh, we, so for me, when it comes to finances, it's knowing as an entrepreneur, where's your personal finances? What, where is the need immediate? And how could you solve the immediate need and then work on building on that bigger vision, right? Um, and also with finances, too, is having a mindset around investment versus spending. You're not going to spend a thousand bucks this month and expect to make five thousand in 45 days right it is putting in the money and the time and knowing that you're building on something that will pay off long term um but i think a lot of that and a lot of it is budgeted too so usually that's not a sexy conversation people want to hear with online business <laughs> and um but i think that's one of the most important conversations you can have because Again, I think a lot of this was my personal experience. When I got really clear on what my finances were, was and what I, how I needed to deal with that, I got a lot of mental freedom to pursue entrepreneurship. You know, I, it, when it went from a month-to-month kind of experience, oh, I need this money for next month, versus, okay, I have a few months in expenses ahead of me. Uh, okay, let me go and show up in, a, in the most authentic way I can show up. And that allowed me to... Uh, connect to a relationship, serve more powerfully, and guess what? Things just start working in a, in a natural way. You know what um, I realized, and this, is, this was a huge shift in my business over the last year. I started my agency, like, officially in, oh, 2018, I guess. I started working, you know, in marketing several years before that, but the agency itself, I started at the end of 18 and I had a couple clients you know throughout 2019 here and there up and down and then throughout 2020 I had a lot of people kind of come at me a little bit desperate in the beginning and they were they were almost where they needed to be but they weren't quite ready to be able to really go the long haul with it and so they would have a little bit of success or they did a little bit of testing and then next thing you know it's like they're running out of money and it, it's like they would make it back but they wouldn't make enough back to reinvest and start over again and their expectations were a little bit high and I thought you know what this is a little bit exhausting for me because the first few months of me working with a client really is uh, heavy. It's heavy in the consulting, the mindset, the expectations, all the things that I have to coach on. Because I'm sitting over here going, look, I want to make pretty videos and I want to do images and I want to write some copy and I want to push this stuff out there and get you amazing traffic to your website. Uh, but when they get to you and they go through the process that you've got set up for them, if it's not ready to take them in and is very clear and easy for people to make, you know, to step forward uh, with you and give you money from that stranger space all the way to the bank, then it can be really taxing because that's really when the offers are being tested for the general public. A lot of people will be like, well, I've sold this and and I've done great on this and that and the other. And I'm like, yeah, but you got to realize those are people that you've known for the last six months because you've been all talking to each other in a Facebook group, so they already know you. We're doing Facebook ads out there to perfect strangers. You just opened your store in the middle of a city that you've never been to before. Nobody knows who you are. Are you truly ready for that cold traffic to come in to the point where you can convert them? And so that's a lot of the testing that happens, and it's really, 
it's it, that's a point where a lot of people just they kind of get stuck and they don't know how to go over the next hump so when I go over that with people I'm like look we're gonna do this for three months and then this is what's gonna happen but at this point I'm getting to the point now where I'm like you know what you're not ready for this so I think that you should go do this first and then come back or we could test these particular things but I don't want you to go and drop some large amount of money to try to get people through this hump because if you don't have the wherewithal to come back from that um, you're going to be devastated and then you're going to walk away and think oh I'm such a failure and it's like that's not the case it, it's just that you've got a few little kinks to put together so what I decided, because it was so exhausting to me, I decided that once I get to a certain point with a client and we're able to patch things together properly and get them some success, some real success that gives them money in their pocket and money in their investment account to move forward to the next level, then I come back to them and I'm like, okay, we've proven the process. We're ready to go. Here's an annual contract. And guess what? I've secured four of those in the last six, three to four months. Annual contracts. So before it was always like onesie twosie a month or two here and there. What I didn't actually expect was that once I received that money from people and two of them paid up front for the entire year, all of a sudden I didn't have to scramble for the money that I need to pay for my software and pay for my coach and pay for my, you know, all of the things that I'm doing and my advertising. I all of a sudden was given this complete freedom from having to rush to the next client for quite some time. And it's been a beautiful thing. So I want you guys to realize too that if there is something that really wears you out and makes you exhausted to go from one client to the next, find a way to, and use the clients that you really enjoy working with as the ones you start with because that's going to take all the pressure off and then you know what to expect with that client. So look for those ways to leverage that relationship and move into the next package in such a way that they benefit from it greatly and then you benefit from it so greatly that you don't have to worry about finding that next client within the next two weeks. Yeah. And that comes a lot with knowing your numbers, right? Knowing, what, okay, what is the realistic number I need to earn as over the next? I always, I always talk to shark companies at least three months out, right? So whatever work you do today, usually keep your consistency off in about three months. Exactly. So it's knowing, okay, well, how much money at month number three, at the end of month number three, what kind of income do I need to generate? And you have that number and... If so you're you focusing on the money, but the thing is, if some people get a little bit weak in the knees when they talk about the actual dollars, and, and it's easier to kind of say, I just need to have two people to come into my life. And people are easier to envision than dollars. That's a different place to be, right? Uh, but do you, feel, do you feel like um, two people come into my life? At a specific, at a specific number, because usually I think what I find with people is if they're shy about talking finances, they're not good about charging, they're not good about um, making the offer, they're not good about yeah um, being upfront about who, who, like we uh, we all do want to help people. I'm a big believer the best way you help people is getting them to invest in themselves, right? But if we are shy about talking about the money. Even when those people show up, a lot of times we play ourselves short. And right. that's on the coach. That's on the, the business owner because usually the person coming to you, if they're going to step forward and they're going to step into your space and they're going to pay for the outcome of what you can help them achieve, it doesn't really matter what that number is. I mean, obviously to a certain extent, mm -hmm. but it's really like... 
A $2,000 offer is really no different than a $3,000 offer, or a $5,000 offer is no different than a $7,500 offer. It, you really can just put the number out there. And if they're like, oh, that's just a little bit too, too rich for my blood, instead of discounting, which is like the dirty word, instead of discounting, say, well, how can we frame this so that you can get, you know, which part of this do you really, um, can you do? Maybe we have some sort of payment plan or we stretch this out over a longer period of time. Or maybe you use these materials and then instead of coaching privately or whatever the thing is, if it's coaching business, um, you know, find some other way to meet less often with a little bit less of that personal support. If you've got materials for things, that's the beauty in having your stuff ready to go too, is to have your materials ready to go so that it does. It, there's no skin off your teeth if you hand over documents for a lot less. It's the coaching and the time that's worth so much more because people always come to those decision points and they don't know which direction to take next. And that's when they need you and um, so, you know, just make it accessible for them and, um, and, and, but don't discount, just lessen what happens. And I think you know, a lot of this and the fair market they come back into is where you can be confident to ask for the true, the way that you really want it. It's a $5,000 offer, having the confidence to ask for it. Um, and, and, and understanding that process of, oh, I don't have the discount, but I, there's other options. Um, so that's why I think mindset is the key to this whole entrepreneurial process. Um, because if you don't have the right energy, because people, we have always say, I always say like sales, and I've learned sales is like the transfer of energy. So if I'm confident, I believe in myself, believe in the offer, and you know, I'm, I'm, I'm healthy, my mindset that day, more than likely I could transfer that energy to the, the person I'm speaking to, see the, have them see the vision and enroll themselves into that process. But if I'm not feeling good about myself or where I have it, especially from a financial point of view, if I'm in a desperate strait, and I, I show up a lot weaker, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, and I think that's the key. The, the overarching key here is like getting your mindset right about who you are, the offer you have, and that, that might not help you increase your belief. In that look, uh, this is a fair offer. I can help people with it, and it definitely helps me when I show up that way. Love it. Well, I think we've come to a good spot to wrap things up. We've gone a little bit over time, but we always do. So thank you for listening today. Now head over to sallyhendrick.com forward slash clubhouse to participate in our live and recorded events. Thanks for being here.